Actually, so do you believe that people are self-made? I don't believe in that concept. Me, I feel people that call themselves self-made millionaires or self-made whatever are selfish people. <laughs> in the sense that you can't make yourself. <laughs> what do you think? You like, need yeah, people like to, to be make born yourself. Or what? Like, no, as in you can't make yourself. Whether your status, whether you were born, whether uh, from how you, how you were born, how your status improved, how you live your life and everything. You can't say you are self-made because in the sense that self-made people are loners. They don't need anybody. Yeah. But in business, it's not just one transaction. It's between you and the client. And if a client doesn't give you, you the businessman, the chance, you, you won't be made. Yeah. So if you say self-made, self-made, what is the point? Hello, 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 and welcome back to Daily News Hive, where we talk about educative, entertaining, and informative content. Today, we have a very special interview for you guys. We talk about graphic designing, the world of graphic design in Ghana, the creative industry, and many, 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 many more interesting stuff. So, we're going to do it. One of the best graphic designers I've ever met in my life. Yes, I'm not that old, but like I've met a lot of people, and this guy is amazing. I saw his art, and I was blown away. So I said that whatever the case, he must come on this channel and shares how he does what he does and what makes him do and what makes him tick. And who knows, if you're a lady or a single, his possible is looking for a wife also, so he can connect you. There. So we have in the house the very handsome guy himself, Nana, the artist. Well, so you are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So he's the founder of the Chosen One, One Studios, Studios yeah. formerly called the God King Network. Yeah. So... I know that you are into branding, concepts, arts, and many other things. Yes, um, including matte painting. In yeah. Including matte painting. Yes. Mm. You're a handsome guy. You, you won't laugh. Me. <laughs> 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 you won't laugh me. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, the first question. Okay. Why graphic designing? Why designing? Why art? I mean, mm. the reason I'm asking that is because in the Ghanaian contest, mm -hmm. usually when you're growing up, it's like there are only two things that people want you to end up doing. Something that will take you to their, to their office or something that is science-related. Yeah. They want you to go to become a doctor. Well, you be a nice doctor. Where you are, can you go be a nice doctor? Or you don't see? Charlie. Mm. So what, what made you go into this direction? Okay, so it started from childhood, actually. Um, when I was a child back in kindergarten and primary school i used to do a lot of drama used to do a lot of drum uh, drumming and dancing drawing and all that so my interest was mainly drawing and painting i used to do that when i was a child a lot i used to do other stuff like sculpture and all that but i my interest was more into drawing and painting so i developed that when I was growing up, went to high school mm -hmm. and I started doing a science course. Actually, I was I was a science student for a year. Oh, okay. Yes, I attended Infancy Pim School. So my three boys. Yes. Mm. Mm. Muba, Muba O seven. We did. <laughs> so um I decided to switch. Wait, so you left the science class? Yes, I left you the science class. Yeah, because it wasn't going well. I was failing in physics <laughs> and chemistry. And my math was really bad. <laughs> so I decided, actually, this, this thing is not good for me. So let me just go to what I know. Ah. Yeah, and I decided to switch to... Wait, so when you switch, you just switch to, like, Form 1? Yes, I had to repeat again. Huh. So I was actually supposed to finish in 2006. Like, you actually... I finished in to... 2007. Like, that's wild. Yes. Because I'm, the reason I'm saying it's wild is because I'm just trying mm. to imagine. Because you, I'm sure you knew that by switching, you go back one Oh, year. yeah, I knew. And I you, knew you still did it. You should have seen my father's face when I switched. He bored. Hey, he wasn't <laughs> bored, but he was a bit disappointed. Oh. Because he didn't understand why I'll leave a good course like science and go for visual arts. But at the end of the day, that is what I'm interested in and that is what I'm good at. So what can he do about it? And I'm sure it was competitive to get into. Um, not really. Not, what I meant was that to get into the science. Um, it was. It was because... I ever since I was a child, I haven't really been good with maths. Like my maths has been very bad. So 
getting me into a science course at infancy Pim wasn't a joke yes because he himself he's a doctor so oh. he was hoping his first son will also be a doctor oh so he can take over his clinic or something but and you Charlie, also be your first child also be a doctor then you're going to the tradition then it'd be like yeah the tradition goes on like this <laughs> Like he messed up for Loki. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so that was when I started studying visual arts okay. in school. And I took, you know, at that time, at that time, we had to, I think we had to drop one course. It used to be picture making, uh, graphic design, and the electives, I mean, it used to be picture making, graphic design, um, GK. And ceramics. What's GK? General knowledge in art. Okay. Yes, GK and ceramics. But um, during our time, they had to switch. They say you ha- you have to drop one. Either you pick uh, picture making, or you pick um, graphic design, and you replace the last one with either music, economics, Oi. or French. Hey. Yes. Which one did you choose? Oh, me. I chose music. Music. Yeah, I chose music. But I never attended the music class. Hmm. So after all, so it means that so when you left SHS, yes. What did you do next? After SHS, I wrote North Deck. Like after SHS, wrote North Deck. Yes. So after North Deck, <laughs> the North Deck, you wrote North Deck again. I wrote North Deck. No, I didn't write North Deck again, but I applied for um what did they call? I applied to attend KNUST to do okay. communication design there, but my grades were not good enough for KNUST. So I decided to go for another option because I didn't want to sit on for two years. Mm. Uh-huh. So I decided to look for um, Kumasi Polytechnic. Okay. So I chose two courses, actually. I chose um, uh, fashion. Fashion? Yes. Wait. And I chose entrepreneurship. Oh, interesting. So fortunately or unfortunately, I chose entrepreneurship first instead of graphic design because in my mind entrepreneurship was a big word so i thought i wouldn't get entrepreneurship (laughs) (laughs) so fashion will be my second option (laughs) i decided that okay then let me just go for the entrepreneurship like that since they've they've chosen me ah so you did entrepreneurship so i did entrepreneurship as a full course interesting yes i wonder how that would be like can you it was it was fun but it was very stressful because you got to a point during our second year like this, you have to establish your own businesses, hey. form groups, yeah, establish your own businesses for like two years, and you'll be graded based on the businesses and every based on the success of the yeah, business. Uh, yeah, based on the success of the business. Aside that too, there was another part called consulting, where you form groups, go to various small business, like you choose like three clients from the markets, like three small businesses as your clients. Go and consult them on how to improve their business every week. Hey. And they'll have to show results. Wow. Yes, or else you'll be graded. And at the end of every semester, you have to give a full report hey. and a presentation on how you did everything. Oh, that's Go actually to the new venture and the new uh, the consultant, yes. Oh, that's actually so, you know, a new great venture course. is actually the course where you start your own businesses. Uh, but aside that, we did other things. We did legal issues. We did marketing. We did accounting under the entrepreneurship course. So a it was actually course. a good course. Yeah, very, it was very a very good course. good course. And another good thing too is that there was a time where you could branch. I think in the final year, you could also branch to learn another extra course in addition. So you can decide to learn fashion in addition. You can decide to learn mm. another thing in addition. Yeah. What did so, you choose? I honestly don't remember. <laughs> 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 That's an anticlimax. I was, I, I was thinking you would have chosen graphic design. I honestly, no, there was nothing like graphic design at that time. Mm. So uh, if I had known we were doing gra- the uh, polytechnic, uh, Takradi Polytechnic was doing graphic design at that time, I would have applied for Takradi Polytechnic instead of Kumasi Polytechnic. But do you regret doing that course? Which one, interpretation? Yes. Honestly, I regret a bit. Why? In the sense that I just wasted my time. <laughs> I think just said it was a good course. It was a good course in general, but not for me. Mm. I just wasted my time. And at that time, the thing is, um, 
my problem was I didn't really get someone to advise me on certain courses to take. Oh, okay. To like certain certain courses to take to achieve what I wanted to achieve, like to be what I wanted to be. So I was actually experimenting. Mm. Uh huh. So any course that will make me avoid mass. <laughs> mm. Any course that will make, make me avoid mass, mass, and then you do it. I'll do it. Okay. Unfortunately, the courses I actually choose that I thought would make me avoid maths actually made me use more maths. <laughs> like entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship was one. And after that entrepreneurship, I decided to do a global course at IPMC NCC. Mm. And this NCC too was pure IT. More calculations. Yes, more calculations. So we had Java, they did graphic and web design. I actually chose the course because of graphic and web design. Mm, you yes. saw the design attached to it. Then there no math. If I wasn't even graphic and web design, it was web design only. Oh, okay. Yes, but at that time, we we're using this HTML5 and CSS. So me, I was more interested in the web design aspect than the Java and the uh, networking and the other All stuff. stuff. Uh -huh. So I actually failed in everything except, except that one. Uh, web design. So... From that point, so how did you end up where you are right now? Because I'm seeing a lot of different yes. things that are... The funny thing is, when I finished high school, yeah, I was doing graphic design. So which form As of graphic I was design? printing shirts. I used to print shirts. I used to print... Oh, okay. I used to practice graphic design, but not for money. Mm. I used to practice graphic design. It wasn't for money. It was for fun. So I was actually enjoying it. Yes, I used to print t-shirts... So there was a time where I even brought my own clothing line. Hey. Yes, but I didn't. It didn't work. It didn't go anywhere. I didn't have money. <laughs> what was the name of the clothing line? What was the name? I think Mr. Monkey. Mr. Monkey. Yeah, Mr. Man. Monkey. Not a bad name. Hood rat. I actually started with hood rat in high school. Oh, okay. But because we finished high school, at the time we I introduced hood rat, we were almost done with high school, so I didn't get a chance to hide. Who to hype it. So I just cancelled it mm. and decided to start with Mr. Monkey. And even with Mr. Monkey, self, oh, crap, problem. Problems. Yeah, in fact. So after high school, I used to do it for fun and all that. So I paused on it for some time. And when I was in my final year in the Polytechnic, I went to my father and told him that ah, I want to do graphic design as a business. I want to be printing shirts and all that. And he has seen me do something like that in the house. So he said, okay, if that is what I want to do, to make extra money, fine. So he said, okay. And I started. So I started doing it in school, in mm. the final year. So I used to get contracts from small, small organizations in the school. Mm. Yeah, small, small organizations in the school, print t-shirts for them. Our hostel, like this when they're having events, I used to design posters for them. And if I tell you the laptop I started with at that time. What laptop? I started with a uh, Dell Aspire. Hey. 2009. One gigabyte a byte RAM. Hey. What software will run on that? Yeah, it was, um, at that time it was Vista. Windows Vista. Windows Vista. Yeah, that was running on it. Windows Vista that floor. Yes, but, win yeah, but Windows 7 came after, so I changed to Windows 7. I started using that laptop when I entered Poly in 2009. Hmm. Yeah, so I decided to make money from that laptop. <laughs> Uh -huh. So, at which point did you go? So, okay, you finish. So, at which point did you go like commercial graphic design? Um, commercial graphic design was after the polytechnic. After the polytechnic, yes. After the polytechnic, I went commercial. That was when I got. Fortunately for me, my stepmom at that time was part of this nursing union, oh, so okay. she got a contract from the nurses union to do a shirt. They had an event also, so I printed shirts for them. Oh, from okay. Um, aside that, too, I had a contract from, uh, what do they call them? This, the nursing uh, department at this Garden City University. Oh, okay. So I was doing business with my stepmom at that time. I'll print the shirts and show will go and sell. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. That's yeah, a at that time. family so, business. Yeah, so I'll print the shirts and she'll go and sell. But at that time, the business came down. Mm. So 
my father asked me there was one guy that used to um print things for the Bekwai hospital my dad was medical superintendent for Bekwai hospital at that time mm. so there was one guy that used to print stuff for my dad but that hospital so later he told my dad told him that oh he has a son that is interested in graphic design oh okay so can he teach me how to do sign posts and all that and he said oh no problem so he asked i, I was supposed to be an apprentice so he asked whether he could pay mm. that man is dead now mr Adia. okay and he's dead now and um, he the man said okay he will do it for me for free wow so i used to move all the way from bekwai to kwadaso every day mm. yeah to go and learn how to do but i learned embroidery too oh okay. how to use the embroidery machine so the man was like a mentor to you he was yeah he was sort of a mentor to me yeah yeah so but before him when i was in the polytechnic the one that actually revived the graphic design in me was um one of my friends eddie he's perry eddie he's a photographer oh, okay yeah he was the one that actually revived it in me so he was the one that was showing me that oh charlie if i do this if i do this charlie this is what will happen this is how they print shirts this is how they do this this is how they do that uh -huh. so he was the one that actually introduced me to photoshop mm. at first i used to do coral draw and the first time i actually used the coral draw software was back when i was in high school oh okay. that time we had this pentium 3 machine oh yes then we, that's what i used to practice coral draw but i used to do basic designs with it so i started like improving little by little so it was Eddie that actually showed me how to use photoshop he introduced me to photoshop but he didn't really show me the details so okay. i had one guy to when i was at ipnc studying the ncc course and um, michael he was also my mate he was the one that sent me to prodigy graphics mm. to see how they do their things prodigy graphics in kumasi to oh, okay. see how they do their things and when i went there Fortunately for me, the guys liked me. They installed Photoshop on my laptop. And they taught me the basics that day. Wow. How to use the tools that day. So when I came, I just decided to practice them. But I started. Mm. So it means that from your story, you are bringing me to a very interesting question. Mm. Do you think, you know, these days, you hear a lot of people calling themselves like self-made people, yeah. stuff like that. But from your story, it looks sounds as if people some, I wasn't some of them meet some people are some of them were friends some of them were friends family family some of them were yes. family friends of your family yes like all contributing to make you who you are right yes. now yes so actually. do you believe that people are self-made i don't believe in that concept I me mean, i feel people that call themselves self-made millionaires or self-made whatever are selfish people <laughs> in the sense that you can't make yourself what do you think you like, like, like to, to be make born yourself, or what like, no, as in you can't make yourself whether your status, whether you were born, whether uh, from how you, how you were born, how your status improved, how you live your life and everything. You can't say you are self-made because in the sense that self-made people are loners. They don't need anybody. Yeah. But in business, it's not just one transaction. It's between you and the client. And if a client doesn't give you you the businessman the chance you you won't be made yeah so if you say self-made self-made what is the point i think you want to feel like maybe you didn't have help to become Good. successful and even aside that you had friends that promoted your business yeah you had family that promoted your business you had people that invested in your business so if you get up and say you're self-made are you trying to tell us that you conjured everything from the sky and became who you were <laughs> why are you for not your company had help. It shocked me, sir. <laughs> so now, if uh, so, we started. Mm. Now, let me let me before we come back to your personal life. Mm. I'll ask another question. Mm. What do you think about uh, uh, motivational speakers? These days, I get a lot of bad, a lot of bad. For me, uh, rep. Me personally, I don't believe in motivational speakers. You don't like motivation. I it's not that I don't like, I believe in motivation. Like, I believe in motivational quotes. Yeah. But I don't believe in motivational speakers. So you don't pay to go and watch someone I will not pay to go and watch a motivational speaker speak. 
my reason is the way things worked for him or the, the method by which he, he used to make whatever money or whatever to get whatever success he got won't work for another person. You understand? So you can't go and stand on stage and tell everybody that you started your business with one city. One, in fact, that one said <laughs> one grain of rice. You start a restaurant business with one grain of rice and uh, tomato seed, two fishes, and uh, fish <laughs> eye. <laughs> and come and, and lie like to people and tell them that, oh, with that, they can make it. We all have our ways. Someone like Thomas Edison, like this, he had to try about 999 uh, 99 times. times. He got it the hundredth time. So you can't just tell us that that small thing that you did made you this rich. Mm. You understand? Maybe you were lucky enough to get a boost somewhere. So you shouldn't come and lie to people and make it look as if success is magic. And you should also make also you should also make people understand that this life, not everybody was built to be successful. Not everybody was built to be a leader. Yeah. Not everybody was built to be a CEO. If we're all built like that, we won't have employers and employees. That is what a lot of people don't understand. Mm. So motivational speakers don't speak the truth. Because the truth is not nice. It's okay to tell somebody that, oh, whatever you are doing is good. So, like, keep it up. You are doing good, a, a good job. So, keep it up. It's no problem. Like, eventually you'll make it. That's different. That's another form of motivation. But coming to lie to people about things that don't exist. Or, for all you know, the motivational speaker is just keeping a cover. Mm -hmm. Because there was a time like this. At the mall, I met a guy who was selling Which a book. Akram mall. Akram mall. I was. Uh, I met a guy who was selling a book about how to be rich. And the guy was wearing slippers, <laughs> walking under the sun, selling a book to me who was driving. Wait, was he the author of the book? He was the author of the book. Oh, interesting. Telling me who was driving my car mm. and doing my work. How to be rich. How to make money. Mm. So I just bought the book because of the stress it was going through. So they support you. I kept the book. I left the book inside my car till I sold it. I'm sure I sold the car with the book. <laughs> I get your point. You understand? So yeah. I don't really believe in motivational speakers. Mm. The only motivation you should you should be concerned about is spiritual motivation. Because once you're you are motivated spiritually, whatever you motivates you spiritually once uh, you are at peace spiritually it will manifest in the physical whatever doors will open will open for you so you should just be one with god pray to your god keep a clean mind don't don't be don't do bad to people like do what you feel uh, uh, do the things you feel you be want uh, you want people to do to you unto you because karma actually works. Mm -hmm. You understand? And if karma doesn't come in the form of a woman that will come and chop all your money, <laughs> it will come in another form. That's even worse. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, <laughs> let's leave this conversation. <laughs> okay. Now, let's start graphic design. Mm -hmm. So, you do, I saw you <clears throat> on your page, you have this interesting concepts. Yes. Which are not normal. <clears throat> like some of them are like aliens, some of them are like Yes. Where where do you get your ideas from? Okay. Naturally, I don't think like a normal human being. Like an abnormal human being. I don't think like a normal human being naturally. Mm. I think like someone who has an IQ of two hundred and five. Yes, my <laughs> IQ be lower than that. Are you sure have you tested it before? I don't know, Seth. Yeah. So um the thing is I beg cut the part. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is um um the those designs actually come from movies, cartoons. Uh -huh. I've been watching cartoons since I was I was a child. I've always been interested in sci-fi and all that. There was a time I even used to make paper. Uh, paper mobile phones, paper laptops and all that when I was a child. Oh okay. Yeah, so I used to be interested in sci-fi ever since you were a kid. I was a child, yeah. So I think that's where all that motivation came from. Mm. Mm, so what kind of <clears throat> but I've seen very some of them are like postmodernism. Like yes. maybe mm. um 
uh, what do you call it? apocalypse, like post apocalypse kind of thing. Yes, so to be honest with you, I'm moved by chaos. Okay. Yes, I'm moved by chaos. Like in the sense that I like chaotic concepts because I feel chaos is interesting. Mm. Anarchy is fun. Not doing is like the concept of anarchy is fun. The fact that you can have robots kill somebody, you can have robots take over nuclear, you can launch nuclear weapons and destroy something and something will just like change. The state of something will just change within seconds after a five minute action or like an action that happened within seconds, like the state of something will just like mutation, change, like mutation, like that's the, like, I find those things interesting. Mm. In the sense that normal is boring. So if you do normal things, who has ever been remembered for doing anything normal? Nobody. Nobody. Leonardo da Vinci was not remembered for doing normal paintings. He was remembered for doing other stuff. The Mona Lisa was just um it was just an add-on. But he did like he did crazy things before the Mona Lisa. He used to draw uh, human beings with um, the faces of goats. He used to oh. draw, yeah, he used to, he, he was the one that started the human anatomic, uh, anatomy. He actually drew diagrams on human anatomy. I see. Yes, he, he was, at, I think he was fascinated by birds, so he used to get his motivation from birds. He would go to the markets, tell them to release birds, and he would scribble their movements and all that. The man was an interesting man. So he never did anything normal. And because of that, people even used to consider him as a member of the Freemason. Like, he wasn't a Freemason, he was like a member of Illuminati. Okay. Yeah, because of the things he used to do and his enlightenment. The guy was too much. He used to design weapons at that time. Yeah. The tanks we use now, he designed back then. Mm. The Wright brothers built their first plane based on his the design. drawings of Leonardo da Vinci. The man was so good that Bill Gates had to buy his diary of ideas for $35 million. Wow. So you should know what type of person Leonardo da Vinci is. And he wasn't remembered because he was an ordinary artist. There are other artists, great artists during the Renaissance era that were Michelangelo, Donatello, yeah. um, um, what's his name in pro? Uh, this mad painter, Van Gogh, Vincent Van Gogh. All of them existed. But why is Leonardo da Vinci's name more popular than the others? Because he did futuristic stuff. He designed futuristic things people at that time didn't think would ever exist. And that is what I do sometimes. Okay. Yes. So if you look at my work, most of my work is normally based on sci-fi fantasy. Yeah. Yes. So most of my work is based on sci-fi fantasy. That's what I normally do personally. Like when I'm... In your free time. Um, when, yeah, in my free time. When I'm free. That's what I normally do. But... For money, I normally do branding and concept art, like concept product development. Yeah. So what's the product development like? Okay, product development, you know, sometimes when um, there are some clients that want a new product in the market, so they will tell you that we are bringing in maybe this toffee. We want you to design the box. We want you to design the wrapper. So you have to develop. You can either use your own style or they'll give you a template to follow. Okay. Uh, so it's part of the product development. Mm, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, so you create the product from scratch. So most of these billboards you see, have you noticed most of the time you see, you can see maybe um, vital milk on a billboard. Yeah. And you, the vital milk you buy looks a bit different. Mm. Yeah, so the concept that was first developed based on the distance, like the final concept that was agreed on. Is what they use. So most of the time, they build with those things with 3D animation, mm. yeah, yeah, 3D modeling. sculpture, yeah, 3D modeling. So then that's what they use for the billboards. And it's also so looking at all your experience that you had. I mean, the different ways you have gone, you've gone through to learn graphic designing. What would you advise somebody? Somebody wants to learn graphic designing. They be the person is done with school. Now he wants to learn graphic designing. What would be the shortest method? Because you've gone through too many, too many ways mm. to get to where you wanted to get to. I'm sure looking back, I'm sure there's a shorter method you'd have liked to go through. Um, the shorter method would have been education. Like, as in, um, 
going to study graphic design itself as a course in mm. school. So I did that lit. I did that after I fell from IPMC Kumasi. Okay. So I moved back to Accra mm. and actually attended, I did graphic and web design at IPMC in Accra. Accra. Oh, okay. Peace yeah. So fortunately for me, because it was my field, I, was, I emerged as one of their best students. Wow. And I even went back as a TA. Mm. Yeah, so I taught at IPMC for some time under uh, Mr. Banama, uh, Bamana, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Eben Banam, Bamana. Bamana. His name is, <laughs> his name is Owe, so I beg. Yeah. Let me mention it so that you cut. <laughs> yeah, so it was actually under Mr. Eben Bamana. Okay. Yeah, that man actually believed in me a lot. Yeah, so wow. that was yeah. So that was for that side. So how long was it? How long was the course? Um, it was it delayed a bit because I traveled for some time. Okay. Yes. Um, I did the first part for I think six months. Came came back, did the second part. That was supposed to be another six months, but the second part delayed. Because I had to travel outside the country for some Months. time. Yeah. And I came back. So when I came back, I had to start that course all over again. Mm. Mm. You said from the, the first you said the first part again. No, no, I had to start from the second, the second part. part again. Okay. Yeah. So I had to join a new class and start all over again. Yes. Mm. And the person that actually did that for me was Payal. She was the administrator at that time. Yeah. She was one Indian woman at the administration at that time. She was the one that actually um, ensured that I go back and come and Finish. Start, yeah, start the course. Like, but uh, there was a position for me, so when I come back, I can just start all over again. Mm. And I won't pay the initial fee. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. So, part of the fees were covered. So, I'll just pay the rest and continue. Oh, that was nice of uh -huh. them. Yeah, so... I, because where I was going to, like, it wasn't actually my, I wasn't going on a vacation, so they actually considered. Uh -huh, oh, that that's cool. Here, so. Mm. so, the shortest way would have been to just get education get on it. an education on it, that's all. Then after education? But I won't advise anybody without an art background to go into graphic design. Why? Because you don't become creative, you just become an editor. Hmm... So you have to have that creative mindset. You have to be a creative person in order to do graphic design. Graphic design is just not sitting on the PC and putting elements together. Now you have to understand the elements of graphics. You have to understand the element of design. You have to understand how to mix colors, how to cast shadows, how to uh, uh, use uh, tones, tints, shades, and all that. So if you don't understand those things, you don't understand how to create art, graphic design will be very difficult for you. You'll do what everybody is doing. So if I get what you're saying, mm. you become good at using the tools. You'll become good at using the software and the tools. Yes, but, but you won't be good at creating. So you don't have original, you will produce original You will never be original. Because you don't have that creative spirit in you. Mm. You understand? And graphic design is not something... Like, it's not something you should go into because of money. It's something you should go into because you have the passion for it. But the only reason why we fight for money is, even though we are in it for our passion, um, the work is hectic. What clients demand <laughs> is almost impossible. Mm. So we try to make whatever impossibility the clients want possible. So if you don't pay us what we are owed, Because aside, aside the fact that we are working for you, there are other resources we use to get your results. We use internet, we use electricity, we update our softwares, we have to buy softwares, we have to uh, repair our machines. Our machines are stupidly expensive. You can't get a Cintiq, a Wacom Cintiq for less than 3,000 Ghana CDs. Mm. And that is even the smallest size. That is, I think, 16 inches or so. Uh, Wacom tablets are expensive. Hmm. Uh, Wacom tablets are expensive. 
a lot of things are expensive our machines very expensive because we use you have to consider graphics higher graphics you have to consider higher ram you have to consider storage space you have to now because we are in a digital world you have to consider the cloud too you have to pay for space so many things in the cloud to it. so the graphic design we are doing is not a bed of roses mm. it's actually very expensive yeah and it's very expensive to invest in so when we charge a certain because in the u.s if i tell you how much graphic designers earn not only in the u.s and other countries even in australia graphic designers can make as low as 120,000 a year mm. dollars a year i see and ghana graphic designers cannot a lot of ghana graphic designers cannot even afford to buy bicycles just because you are living from hand to mouth. Just because the people in Ghana don't appreciate art. See the thing, how can you come and sit in front of somebody and tell the person that you get you want a logo design for 200 Ghana, 50 Ghana, 100 Ghana? Hmm. MTN, you yourself, when you are doing using your MTN data, how much data do you use? Hmm. In order to get a logo done, this is what the graphic designer has to go through. Number one, he has to go onto the internet, research for this, to find out whether whatever concept he's creating for you is not common online. That is a lot of data. Number two, the logo is your brand. So he has to represent you well. So if he doesn't produce something good for you, whatever you send to the public, will, the disgrace will end up coming to the graphic designer. Because nobody will say your logo is ugly. They will say your logo was created by a useless graphic designer. Yeah. Hmm. I see. You understand? So yeah. we have to consider all this stigma. The samples we have to create, sit down and create. The energy we use alone to sit down and just create one logo alone. It's not a joke. Sometimes a logo can take a month to develop. Actually, Ghanaians will not consider that. They are just looking at the size of whatever is on this thing. They don't consider whatever is happening behind yeah. the scenes. They've just seen the end. Oh, it's something small. In I think it's why we now be charging and we're gonna ah. But once we two more things, sir. So let's talk about the. <laughs> no, this thing is something it's that has, it's really on your heart. Uh, it's something that I have been actually I have been advocating for for a very long time. So there was even a time I, I, I even brought a hashtag that we won't pay, we won't take less than 1,000 Ghana cities mm. for a logo. No matter how small the logo is, we will not take less than 1,000 Ghana cities. Because it is a lot of effort. Seriously, designing a logo is more stress than designing a poster. Designing something that is unique among millions it is not a joke mm. uh -huh. poster you can steal somebody's poster design just tweak a lot of some things on it and that so a logo you can steal somebody's logo design when you even tweak self the person will see and find elements of their logo and sue you you understand yeah. so charlie it's a lot. It's a whole lot. It's a whole lot. <laughs> I think this time you should be able to the way this advocacy in your heart. You should you should take it up more. Oh, I've, I've actually that is another problem too. I have Ghanaian graphic designers are so hungry that they don't consider certain things. If I decide, I, me, I've decided that I want to bring a campaign, a not less than thousand Ghana campaign for logo. And you are refusing to share because you feel it will go against you. When you say that less than 1,000 Ghana CD is not accepted, maybe you will not get clients. Your client that gives you 200 Ghana, 100 Ghana every day, no? maybe every ball. So you will not share, you will not participate. Forgetting that in future, that 100 Ghana CDs will be pure water. So are you going to continue taking 100 Ghana CDs all your life? You won't. Mm -hmm. Because it won't do anything for you. Me, when I started logo design, I was doing it for free. Mm. Yeah, I was doing logo designs for free. So I could improve to a certain point and started charging heavily for logo. 
So I know my value. I know my worth. I know what I've done. You understand? Except maybe I consider your business. Maybe I see that you, that is there. No. If I mention, you can't afford. So whatever you feel you want to give, you can give. At least you should be able to cover for the data I've wasted. But I won't go and charge somebody 200 Ghana, 300 Ghana for logo. No way. I won't do it again. <laughs> so what are some of the clients that you have worked with? Okay. Um, I've actually worked with a lot of clients. I've worked with fashion pilots, Madi Kumbaru. Mm -hmm. um, I've worked with um, Kobirana. Oh, okay. I've worked with Frank Atos. I've worked with J. Wills, Joy Williams. I've, I've worked with... Um, uh, Joel Orleans, mm. formerly known, uh, formerly with YFM. I've worked with Caroline oh, of okay. YFM. Um, jo I still work with Joel Orleans. Um, we work for, we are actually bringing a drink out, radioactive. Nice. Yes, but it, it used to be radioactive, but it's rad. It's rad now. We used to do radioactive Fridays. So we mm. used to work, I used to do the graphics for radioactive Fridays and all that. So, um, Joel is still my business partner. We still work together. But he lives in Amsterdam now. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, I've worked with a lot of clients. I've worked with a lot. A lot of them. A I lot of see. them. So, um, I worked with Pizzeria too. Mm. Um, Pizzeria.com. That's all good network. Okay. Yes. Um, I've worked with Kula Perry. I still work with him. He's still my big brother. So, uh, I've worked with a lot of people. I see. Mm. So we are about to end the interview, but uh, okay. Imagine that somebody is a, a young guy, a young lady, mm. and then you just started graphic designing. Mm. What would you say to motivate and encourage the person? Um, they should forget body for now and improve. Mm. When they improve, brand themselves well. Whatever they demand, they will get. In the sense that you can't do cheap work and expect high pay. You need to make sure whatever work you are doing will demand whatever value the work is. Uh, like will demand whatever uh, payment the, the value of the work is. So if you don't learn, you don't humble yourself, take money out of your mind for now, improve. Before thinking of money, you will fail. Because money is like another form of creative block. Once you're a creative person and you get too involved with money, you forget the reason why you were interested in what you are doing in the first place. So I've been through it before. I've been through all those stages before. You go through it. So it will get to a point you won't be able to create anything because all you are worried about is who is paying me? How am I getting this money? How am I? And that is bad for you. Understand? So you should concentrate on, you should uh, develop your interest more in graphic design, upgrade yourself before you start thinking too much about money. Mm, okay. So guys, we've come to the end of the interview. So if somebody wants to contact you for any kind of work, what can they contact you on? Okay. So what are your Instagram uh, handles? Uh, my, hand my Instagram handle is um, the... Chosen One Studio. I think I'll yeah, it will all be at the back. It will be at the bottom. And the numbers? Um, I just have one number. <laughs> uh, 0237 Can you say it again? 0237 And the office is actually located, located in my house at Lakeside Estates. Yeah. Okay, guys. So, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. And then, when we upload new videos, one of the first people to see it. Don't forget, stay safe. See you next.